Fuck, what is it? <laughs> Before this starts, if I sound weird, I just came off uh, an illness for like a week and a bit, two weeks. And I'm sick again, which I think medically is classified as being cursed. But I'm being very brave about it and also uh, a big boy. So uh, like and subscribe. Okay, so I'm not a car guy. Uh, I do not have the requisite skills to design and build a car, let alone an EV. Uh, so many people might find my words hollow. But at the same time, cars usually go like forwards, like in the one direction. If you've somehow missed the news, the Tesla Cybertruck has released Asterisk after only four years of anticipation since its concept reveal in late 2019. And while that seems like a really short amount of time, it is. But if that sounds like it would cause the final product to be underdeveloped, it did. Whoops, I guess. I think getting an EV pickup truck from non-functionality, the concept phase, to driving on the road in four years is rather impressive. And the Cybertruck demonstrates exactly why it needed more time and development. That little asterisk I had before is because the car isn't really being sold. They're actually just rolling out the uh, like the pre-registration that they had several years ago and apparently are sold out until 2027, which is either a shocking success of demand or a crippling blow to supply, depending on how you look at it. For what it's worth, none of this is really surprising. While Tesla is a very interesting and at times groundbreaking company in terms of the technology inside of cars, it is one of the worst car makers on the planet by many factors. Tesla often ranks well with customers, but poorly with reliability and build quality for a variety of reasons. EVs in general rank really low and Tesla doesn't exactly have the benefit of rigorously tested supply chains along with decades of experience. The features heavily rely on software, further decreasing their stability and reliability as their cars are slowly required to do more than they used to. And while making their cars for long enough to actually get good at them helps, they're still not exactly a gold standard. Imagine a company whose reliability has just started to become competitive in products they've manufactured for over a decade, making something that isn't the thing they've been making for over a decade in a completely different class, promising completely different features led by the whims of a man who reportedly risked OSHA violations because he doesn't like the color yellow. Not only is that the type of stupidity that's really illegal to do and really easy to avoid, it seems extremely in character of him, so I completely believe he did it. So let's actually get into this. Actually talk about this disaster of a launch. No more beating around the bush, which is something this car apparently cannot do. Despite being touted as a truck and having all wheel drive and dual all wheel drive variants, neither seems particularly adept at actually moving the car. The difference between Tesla's official videos and reality differ quite considerably. In their Cybertruck video titled who could have guessed that? Uh, from almost four months ago, almost every shot is the thing drifting in dirt or crushing some light puddles, doing manly stuff. It's only at the end that it even drives on a road. I'm not sure if you caught that subliminal messaging really between the lines, uh, but they're broadcasting that this can and should be used off-road and perhaps an apocalypse that they may or may not start. Except for some reason, it genuinely kind of struggles, which is noticeable rather immediately when you try and lock the wheel differential because you get an error message because the car advertised to go off-road isn't feature complete to go off-road. This is not a good look considering electric vehicles still struggle a bit off-roading because it's not as easy to bring backup fuel and it's commonly cold in these areas, which reduces the battery life which you need to be able to get there and back. Well, this is easy. Go to a place where it isn't cold. No bueno. This monstrosity gets stuck on both things that are hard and things that are soft. It takes tremendously little effort to find videos of what looks like a piece of folded cardboard absolutely digging itself a sandy grave. Difficult to navigate dunes? Goddamn right it can't. Public beach? No thanks. I just ate. Part of this will be solved with some future software updates, a tempting prospect. However, if I buy the car, I would like to be able to use the whole car. And admittedly, there is a lot of car in this car. Put that as the slogan. When I mentioned Tesla was rather ahead of the curve with technology specifically, but not like the cars in general, I was referring to things like high quality cameras along with a manufacturer operating system that doesn't take inspiration from those fake operating systems and films. Why would I? 
BMW implement a widely held standard and capable system, when I could instead use BMW iDrive and force everyone to awkwardly input destinations as the map struggles to render at 5 FPS with hardware from a decade ago. Tesla OS is rather useful and fully functioned with decent hardware, making it excellent at displaying high quality maps and controlling music, and that's all it should be doing. Why does it have to do everything the car can possibly have? Elon Musk's perfect Tesla car doesn't even have door handles, it's just a bunch of digital toggles hidden away in 17 different sub-menus. The Cybertruck doesn't even have a traditional gear stick in the sense that it technically doesn't even have the stick at all. To change from drive to park or whatever you want, uh, you have to use a very awkwardly placed like bar just right above your head next to the rear view mirror. You just swipe your hand along it. You can instead use the screen, which isn't distracting at all. In fact, basically everything has to be done with the screen because the thing doesn't have buttons. This includes the rear view mirror for some reason. I mean, it doesn't really do anything and it's so small that even if it did something, it wouldn't do it very well. When you cover the truck's bed, it's slanted. So you can't actually see through it. You have to use the camera on the screen. If you think that may be a potential distraction and continuously looking down, is a bad thing, don't worry. Uh, you don't drive the Cybertruck, so 50-50 chance it's not gonna be you. There are real critiques to be leveled at infotainment systems for how dangerous they make people that don't use them correctly, and Tesla has made them so much worse by removing the ability to feel what you're doing and subsidizing it with like voice commands, which, let's be honest, I don't need to hear any more of my own voice. Let me just press the buttons with the silence of knowing who I am deep down and get these voice commands out of my life. I don't really care how efficient or intuitive you make it, I'm not using the screen or this stupid little toggle to turn the windscreen wipers while it's pouring rain. Sorry. Windscreen wiper. Yeah, the thing only has one. It's just like a really big thing. $100,000 by the way. Uh, thankfully it actually cleans the driver's side and not the passenger side because that is not a given with this car. And wouldn't you know it, there's already been one that's broken. Although this does segue into another concern with the car, uh, the all-terrain car that's had issues with water. Or just the concept of things getting wet. A car ready for any planet. Currently as of writing, the stance of Tesla is taking the car through a car wash without putting it into that specific mode voids the warranty. Now, if this is true, this makes it not a great electric vehicle, but it makes it an excellent death trap for interloping rats. So pick your poison. Now I don't want to pretend like designing an entirely electric product to be waterproof isn't challenging, but I would argue that there probably should have been more of an attempt than this, because this low render distance machine genuinely struggles with water of any kind or volume. Submerged, obviously not going to happen. A large puddle, probably not either. Rain! Somehow still no. Again, thank god it never rains. What is this, Venus? <laughs> Idiot. Realistically though, the stainless steel panels kind of struggle with any volume of most things. The car doesn't ship with a clear coat like every other car in the world does, which is used to protect the paint and the metal of the car. You can opt into it for $5,000 that has a package with urethane-based film to achieve the same effect. And again, it comes with every car on the planet, so... Now, if you didn't get that option, the things that can stain the metal, according to Tesla, include grease, oil, bird droppings, tree resin, dead insects, tar spots, road salt, and industrial fallout. Some of these are very reasonable. Industrial fallout affects, I would say, every car in a negative way, but most of these things are just like the outside, and two of them are found inside of cars. Why would you choose a paneling? that is allergic to the environment it lives in. Hilariously, if you want to put a cover on your car to not have to clean it every single time that you leave it outside, they actually recommend you don't use the non-official ones because it can heat up the batteries too much when you're charging it. So like, just don't use the thing. Even then, the stipulations for washing the car are also intense, like, Make sure no soap is left on the car. Use specific cleaning products and don't let water rest on the car. I mean, look at the amount of warnings related to just cleaning the damn thing. There are reasons why cars are not made of stainless steel paneling. Maintenance is definitely one of them and safety is another. For those who don't know entirely how cars made, so everyone that bought a Cybertruck, uh, 
They're not constructed as like a big unit of metal that gets painted or chiseled out of a big rectangle of steel. It's usually several medium sized parts that are put together over a very thin frame. For many, this seems counterintuitive for safety. The solid thing is clearly better because it's harder to break. Those people don't design cars. Vehicles now have what's called a crumple zone in many sections of a car, which shed and break off very easily in order to absorb the impact of a crash before that force is felt by the people inside. Basically, in high speed crashes, both exert force onto each other, and that has to go somewhere. You want it to be the metal, not the person. It's for the same reason that we make stun mats out of compressible materials that are soft. Slow the force of the fall and spread it evenly as opposed to just having like a giant slab of cement. Cybertruck bravely ignores this and is literally just like a big hunk of stuff. People terminally online have been comparing its crash test with multiple trucks and pointing out how little it moves thanks to its low center of gravity and proves how much safer it is. I mean, the thing can just drive away from the crash. Not understanding that if both vehicles receive the same amount of force, they both need to distribute that same force and if it's not going towards moving the car, it's going towards moving your bones out of your meat. Now, this is being tested by people far smarter than the both of us, all of us combined, and they have decided that it is street legal, so I won't argue it there. But I would say it is less safe than other cars on the road. Strangely enough, there's already been a crash involving a Cybertruck on the road, and it's from several months ago. Thankfully, no one was seriously hurt, everyone was fine, and no ambulance was required, but the only reported injury was from the Cybertruck's driver and not the person who was behind this car. There seems to be a very poor selection of priorities behind the car's design. If you're more concerned with bullets than with other cars on the road, um, also it doesn't stop bullets, but like, Elon said this, so why were you expecting it to be true? It certainly doesn't help that while it's designed poorly, it's built even worse. This is in spite of Musk saying, reportedly, that he wants all parts manufactured for the Cybertruck to be within 10 microns of their specific dimensions, which is about the standard by which Bugatti holds themselves for their supercars with better materials. Even before the truck came out, people were very rightfully pointing out that metal expands under heat so it's not exactly very easy to get it within specifications while you're building the thing. And even then, what's the point? Tesla has recurring issues where things on the car don't work and the Cybertruck is no different. Famously, all 3,878 Cybertrucks on the road at the time were recalled due to a fault with the accelerator pedal. The fault being that it could just get stuck at 100%. The panel that sits on top of the actual pedal is liable to slip off and get stuck, and I would say that is a... Yeah, that's a, that's a noticeable fault with the car. More than one Cybertruck has had major undrivable faults almost immediately after leaving the dealership requiring a return to Tesla service, if that even happens. But that's just all the stuff that like stops the car from doing the only thing it's supposed to do. Why would any of that matter? The list of minor faults the Cybertruck has experienced is rather extreme and pretty funny with the list getting longer every single day. The panels on this thing don't really have any intention of staying on it for long term. Uh, random steering issues, charging issues, the only thing the car can consistently do is brake. Some of them are just like comedic, like the front hood closes with such force it can realistically break your finger. In fact, all the panels on the car, especially the doors, are basically cut sheet metal and are sharp enough to cut your skin. The poorly placed gear selector has a pattern of just falling off when it's used, and the solution to that is just taping it back on. Weirdly enough, none of this would be remotely as bad if the entire marketing cycle for this monstrosity was more honest. I've said this before and telepathically blasted it to all my viewers, but Elon Musk needs to not speak, do, or really be around the things that he likes. It's not his intentions that ruin things, it's just a function of his life. Let's be honest, this thing is a prototype. It, I mean, it still sucks as a prototype, it's really bad, but it would be easier to forgive if you just called it that. Elon's out here claiming it can tackle Mars and it can't even reliably mount the curbs in Cleveland. As stated before, Teslas do not have a particularly high manufacturing standard and have struggled to better it over the past decade. Why would you claim this is the one that breaks the cycle. Why now? It's an unattractive art house centerpiece or an attractive child's drawing that can occasionally move. 
selling it as such would probably temper people's expectations that they would be able to use it as a car. Like, the panel gaps and manufacturing errors would be much more excusable by his insufferable fans if he didn't say that he was like, aiming for a sub 10 micron accuracy, which is an insane comment that people were pointing out at the time. Tesla support hasn't exactly been a beacon in these trying times either. Staff cuts and an unexpected volume of issues have left the engineers strapped for time and fixes. The best solution for the previously mentioned pedal falling off is just to rivet the thing in. The gear selector, as I mentioned before, is just a taper, which you can do at home. Occasionally this work actually damages the vehicle as well, if it ever gets fixed at all. Multiple owners have spent more days waiting for repairs than hours was that they have actually been using the car. And I could keep talking about this for like hours. The thing is terrible. It's a terrible car. It's a terrible product. But, you know, it's only $100,000. Um, but I need to end this video eventually at some point. So thanks to the fellas for supporting me. Thank you for watching. Uh, I have nothing to update anyone on live free i don't know what what to say none of you are real you're not real um goodbye like and subscribe buy my merch